everybody loves a good LS swap. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can LS swap your project car for cheap. In this video, I'm going to show you two 1979 Oldsmobile Cutlasses. Both of these cars belong to my friend Clay, and he has LS swapped both of these cars. This one has a 5.3 liter with a cam and has been garage built. This one over here has a L99 6.2 liter V8 out of a 2011 Camaro SS, and it also has the same automatic transmission out of that Camaro SS. Now, how did he achieve these cheap LS swaps? Let's talk about that now. So here to tell us the absolute best way to do a cheap LS swap is Clay. He's actually done this swap several times, so I'm gonna step behind the camera and follow him around his 2002 Tahoe. All right, uh, yeah. Of course, the, the video, we're, we're, we're discussing budget bills as far as the LS swaps go. LS swap, the best way to do it is find you a complete vehicle, uh, when we're talking LS, you can get the 5.3, the 4.8, the 6.0, even the LS1 Camaros. Uh, that's the best way to go, just the LS-based engines. Uh, me personally, I like what they call the Gen 3. That's the ones before they had the uh, uh, displacement on demand and the air fuel management setups. A little bit simpler, uh, less electronics on the engine, and in my opinion, they're, they're just easier. So here we are, I, I picked up this vehicle recently. This is a 2002 model Chevy Tahoe. The reason I picked it up was strictly for donor material. Two wheel drive, had the 4L60, which had all four gears working. Had the 5.3, which all eight cylinders were firing. It was a good running little setup. And like I say, it was a fair enough price where I went ahead and picked it up because it was potentially a good donor vehicle. Uh, as I got further into this particular vehicle, I found the darn thing ran and drove good. It braked good. I just, I, I couldn't bring myself to start tearing it apart. So in the meantime, before I do eventually maybe part this thing out, I cleaned it up and I use it as a daily driver hauler. I pulled the back end out of it. And that, that's a whole nother video. I pulled the back end out. It's a great cargo van. But anyways, when you come across one of these vehicles and typically my other swaps have been wrecked vehicles that were taken off the road. Uh, 5.3 was in one of them, a 4.8 was in two of them, and of course the Camaro, which was mentioned earlier, they were wrecked and taken off the road. This this in, this in particular one is a running driving vehicle that was absolutely filthy. It was incredibly high mileage, but it still runs and drives, which they're out there, and you can get them pretty cheap, pretty reasonable. Uh, so anyways, when you get one of these, number one, I look for a two-wheel drive vehicle because most of the swaps I do involve two-wheel drive setups, real-wheel drive setups. Uh, you get the engine, and if you can get the whole vehicle, you get your engine, you get your wiring harness, which takes a little time, a little time consuming, but you can separate out what you need out of that harness. Some cases, the radiators will actually work in different chassis. You get a oil cooler or a transmission cooler on them. Uh, it's just if you get the whole vehicle, and if you're industrious and inventive, you can make just about anything on these work i mean it's a running driving vehicle you can make just about every aspect of this vehicle go into another chassis and that's where you come in with your your budget build uh, i've even gone so far as to use the gas tank out of these things use the fuel pump uh, what i had had to spend money on and i i got pretty inventive and creative what i have to had to spend money on was my fuel line running from the fuel tank up to the fuel injection fuel rails uh, I went ahead on my first swap and I paid somebody to separate out my harness for me. Worked out really well. Now, if you were to take this engine and transmission and all of the components out and put it in a donor vehicle and then part out or sell the rest of the chassis, mm -hmm. how much do you think you would wind up spending in the entire LS swap if you were just, say, not modifying the engine at all? Oh, I got you. Uh, well, I've got a perfect example, that white cutlass over there. When I first put it together, I had a total, I picked up a 2006 model Silverado that had, had um, went through a front end collision. Truck was totaled out. Uh, I was able to use the majority of components that were with that truck on my G-body swap. When it was all said and done, I sold the bed off that Silverado, which was the majority of the money I was able to recover. 
when it was all said and done, I had less than $800 wrapped up in that swap. That's had to pay crazy for, good. Yeah, uh, and it was a running driving car after the fact. Uh, that includes uh, the fuel line, getting my wiring harness separated out, getting the PCM tuned for that setup. That included, uh, of course, the suspension. I had to redo the suspension, parts of the front suspension on that car, and oh, engine mounts. You got to take care of engine mounts, a uh, set of headers. Uh, you got to modify a transmission mount. This is just G body, but I think most of your budget builds are going to involve a little bit of fabricating. Transmission cross member, engine mounts, which cheap eBay engine mounts are quite popular. Uh, sometimes getting header setups to fit into to different chassis can be a little tricky. If you do enough internet searching, you'll find out what particular headers will fit certain chassis. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing wrong with a set of exhaust manifolds on these things. They float pretty darn good. You can make a true dual exhaust setup with them and go ahead and, float, and throw your oxygen sensors in that true dual exhaust. So. That's the cheapest way to go is run your exhaust manifolds on them. And believe it or not, these exhaust manifolds are several YouTube videos where these guys are cutting them up and welding on them with no issues whatsoever. Matter of fact, they cut them up, weld them, plop them on there backwards and throw turbos on them. So all that stuff, there's plenty of people doing the budget, doing the budget route on this stuff and for good reason, because it's cheap, it's fun and it's easy. So. So I think I'm going to run them down and show them that Camaro SS. Go for it. So thank you yeah. for telling them all about this budget setup here. And what's amazing is uh, you don't realize how many of these Tahoe Suburbans, Silverado, you don't realize how many of them are running around that were built from 99 to 06, 07. There's thousands and hundreds of thousands, and the parts are everywhere, the junkyards. They're just, and it's amazing what different options these things. They're just a huge array from your very basic transport vehicles all the way up to your fully loaded Escalade Cadillac luxury vehicles and they're a lot of fun really cheap fun for sure another way that you can do a budget LS swap is basically just be a good standing member of the local car scene and in doing so you'll have a lot of car buddies and other car guys that know you and you know them and a lot of times they'll be looking to sell different engines transmissions or parts or even just trade you in general there's clay over there revving up that red Tahoe. But uh, that's basically how this deal came to pass. Clay has quite a few buddies in the car scene. And this guy has this 2011 Camaro SS, which unfortunately he wrecked it. And in doing so, he's storing it out here in Clay's property. And he also then sold him the L99 and the automatic for a great deal that otherwise you would not get just looking on eBay or on the Facebook marketplace. But you'll come across deals like that, just being a good standing member of the car scene. I know I've come across many myself. Clay, a lot of this stuff he gets is just because he's a good guy and has a lot of friends in the car scene. So there you have it, guys. The two cheapest ways to do a budget LS swap. So I hope this video helped you out and maybe showed you an alternative to making junkyard after junkyard visit to try to find cheap LS parts. So thank you all for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. I kid you not, guys, not even one hour after recording this video, a buddy of mine texted me two pictures of some LS engines he's trying to get rid of for a very fair deal. Looks like I'm going to be picking up one of these suckers.